North Korea has about 300 military factories, which employ an estimated 500,000 workers. Now this network has a solvent client, Russia. This is what South Korean analyst Yeon Jun Kim writes in an opinion piece for Defense News. The defense sector accounts for 30% to 60% of North Korea's overall economy and produces about $10 billion worth of goods annually. About $700 million goes to nuclear development and about $600 million to missile development. This year, North Korea began reorganizing its defense industry, which correlates with Pyongyang's recent intensification of cooperation with Moscow. Now, North Korea can support Russia by sending ammunition and other conventional weapons. The partnership provides an opportunity for North Korean labor to travel to Russia to learn about advanced defense technology, writes Yeon Jun Kim. At the same time, the South Korean analyst fears that Russia is just the beginning and that the North Korean military industrial complex may soon acquire new clients. He is also worried by the idea that Pyongyang will want to export not only artillery shells and high explosive missiles, but also nuclear warheads. Kim's ambitions have expanded beyond selling tickets to the Wonsan Spa Resort. Now, North Korea is seeking its own version of the South Korean defense industry, a powerful global exporter. The analyst writes. Recall in early August, Russia, for the first time after a long pause, struck Ukraine. With a North Korean missile. However, the missile did not reach its probable target, exploding in the air. The Russians used missiles most actively in this way in the first months of this year. Russia is likely receiving anti tank missiles from North Korea. In late July, a Ukrainian drone spotted something stranger near Vovchansk. Upon closer inspection, the strange object was identified as a Bulse 4. A six wheeled armored vehicle that functions as a mobile anti tank missile launcher. In the Houthi held Hodeida region, Governor Mohammed Kahim told the rebels Al Masira TV that 30 people died and five were missing in the floods, adding that more than 500 people had been displaced. He added that a number of homes were destroyed and more than seven cars were swept away. Hodeida, the southwestern city of Taiz, and the northwestern city of Haja were all hit hard by floods this week during Yemen's ongoing seasonal rainfall that caused flooding that swept away poorly built homes. UN humanitarian agency OCHA said the flooding in Taiz had affected 10,000 people and resulted in 80 wells being buried, farmlands being washed away, and homes damaged, citing access difficulties and a shortage of funding for aid agencies. Local authorities still haven't reached areas severely affected by the floods for two days, leaving some residents trapped inside their homes, according to witnesses who spoke with the Associated Press. Mahdi Al Mashid, chairman of the Supreme Political Council, ordered local authorities to respond to damaged areas, according to Masira TV, which reported that floods caused major damages to properties, lands, and roads in Hodeida. Witnesses described the scene in the Yemeni Tehama coastal plain as horrifying. Mohammed Rassam said some livestock were found dead after drowning in the mud due to the floods. Food supplies and drinkable water were also lost. The flood swept away everything, he said. Some residents were stranded inside their homes in Tehama, a region that is part of Hodeida. Others were able to leave and headed to Hodeida city. Many of the houses in Tehama, where malnutrition has been reported, are made of brick and materials that can be easily ruined by rain. Yeah, that was. 